Hello folks, this is Sula speaking, and you're listening to another video for Teamfight Tactics. Well, in this game, we're going to be looking at another double up game that I'm playing together with Symbol. Been able to do double up games with a whole bunch of different people so far at this split, which has been a lot of fun. This time, we're going to be looking at what happens when a Heartsteel board gets out of control, which is what I'm going to call the no-win scenario. And by no-win, I'm really referring to the rest of the players in the game. A situation where if a Heartsteel board wins, then that's great because you just keep winning and moving towards an eventual victory. Uh, but also, if you lose, the rewards from Heartsteel are so big that it's just going to eventually snowball the player past the rest of the lobby anyway. So as I said, we're going to have a bit of a head heart steel game here again. All right, I was going for Golden Prelude. That would mean that we would not have a Prismatic for the first Augment. We don't get that. Instead, we get head... What, what was this one called? I can't remember. It literally was just on the screen and I missed it. Um, but it's the, it's the portal whereby you see headliners earlier than they would normally. And what this effectively means is you are treated as though you are one level higher for the purposes of your headliner, one level higher. So normally, just to give an example of that, normally you can't hit four cost headliners until you're level eight. But this would mean that you can now hit four cost headliners on level seven, which is pretty significant. So keep that in mind. All right, this is uh, this is the game telling me to do a heart steel opener. There is a heart steel Cassante uh, headliner in my store. And I have an Aphelios sitting there from the first minion drop. So obviously I'm going to look to play this. I usually don't go out of my way to try to run Heartsteel, but if the game's just going to give it to you, then you might as well play the thing because it is uh, it is certainly playable, particularly if you're able to hit the uh, it's particularly if you're able to hit like an early Ezreal. Aphelios is a pretty bad unit, but Ezreal is not a bad unit. So if there's any way you can hit that unit early on. It works pretty well. Uh, or alternately, you can do this. You can hit an early Senna, and then you can play through the Senna as like your main carry, and that actually seems to work fairly well. Uh, I suppose if you also get a ton of Yone's early on, you can play through the Yone, but uh, that, that tends to be a little bit less likely. All right, I'm playing together with Symbol here. He has picked up an Olaf headliner, and he's going to be working through Olaf. Uh, by the way, if you notice, someone already has a Jax headliner, and we're uh, they're only level 3. That is our portal in effect. Normally, you cannot get a 2-cost headliner until you're level 4, but they were able to get the Jax already because everyone's treated as though they are plus 1 for the purposes of their augment. All right, now I actually misread the text on this. I'm looking at here, I see live for danger, edgelords attacks deal 40% of damage to enemies within one hex. It says gain a Yasuo and a Kale. I actually thought this was gonna give me a Yone, not a Yasuo. And uh, I wanted to pick this because I was like, oh, you know, if I can get a Yone here, I'm only one away from being able to play uh, Heartsteel 5. But no, it doesn't give a Yone, it gives a Yasuo, which makes sense. Not a lot of these, uh, uh, not a lot of these augments give you a three-cost unit. So, oof, I've got the Yasuo instead, and that is not the unit that I want. Like, not even a little bit. So, y yeah, I just made a pretty big mistake there, and uh, <laughs> I pretty much griefed my board by playing that. Now it means that I'm effectively going to be down a gold augment because I am not planning on playing into heavy edge lords for this game. I was like, uh, I mean, I guess maybe I'll get Yone's later on, but no, this was just pretty much a total whiff here. This is me not reading the text correctly on, <laughs> me not reading the text correctly on the initial augment and uh, taking something that really does not help me as a result. By the way, I thought I was gonna lose this round, but uh, no, actually, apparently I was able to win. Aphelios got off an ult at like the last second. And I was actually able to win. It might have been better to lose that because I would have gotten more heart steel hearts. But uh, no, okay. Well, I'll I'll take the win and uh, keep going from there. I guess leveling and playing the Lilia for Sentinel trait did make the difference. All right. I also sold the Yasuo. That was a mistake. I should have kept Yasuo around. Why do I want Yasuo? Well, he'll activate true damage on Senna. I do want to get true damage in place on Senna. That uh, cuts 15 off her mana cost, which is a pretty big difference. With uh, and of course also means that she'll do some bonus true damage. But uh, the big thing is that you can activate her bling bonus, which uh, reduces her mana cost from 90 to 75. So far off to a decent start here. Having three hearts still in from the start of the game is great. Notice, however, I did only get two hearts from that fight. And that's because three hearts still doesn't really give you all that much. Particularly if you're winning rounds, you don't really get that much from the trait. Three hearts still is you gain one heart per unit killed. 
and then you get more on losses. But it's only one one heart per unit killed, so uh, it's a little bit unlikely that I'm going, I, I'm, I would have to start losing rounds if I really want to start getting benefits from this. But uh, even if I don't get very many hearts, just the basic heart steal cash out is not bad. It would give, uh, the if you don't get any, if you don't hit the first uh, heart steal tier, which is 20 hearts, you get a cash out that's worth about four gold. And honestly, just getting four gold on the fourth round, what'll it be? That'll be on two, after two six at the start of two seven. Just getting four gold there is actually pretty valuable. And then, oh, look at this. There's a set. I was like, okay. Well, now I'm a Yone away from playing five heart steel. So if I actually can find a Yone, I was telling Symbol, uh, please keep a lookout for Yones. If we can find a Yone, that's five heart steel this early in the game, which would be really, really, really good to have that in this early in the game. So I'm trying to keep an eye out for that. As far as what Symbol's doing on his board, I think I mentioned he picked up an Olaf headliner. Yeah, and he also took the augment that gives you extra attack speed on Edge of Night. So he's going to play like a Bruiser slash Mosher board here. He actually already has seven Olafs. He was not planning on trying to three-star the Olaf, but it's like if, you're, if the game's just going to give you this many Olafs, you might as well. I've already sent him one. I was like, all right, I'll keep an eye out for more Olafs. We can probably three-star the unit without re-rolling, which would be nice. And then he can use that as a transition unit until he gets up to like level eight or level seven or level eight, and then look to find another headliner from there. But uh, you know, three, if he can get the three star Olaf with the the souped up Edge of Night, that'll actually be pretty good. Anyway, my board, I didn't feel like my board was that strong. I basically just have a two star Cassante off the headliner and then a bunch of one stars behind it. But apparently, just having the early Sunfire Cape on the Cassante is enough to win some of these rounds. So I was like, all right. That's fine with me. I don't mind win streaking. Win streaking with heart steel is good. No, like seriously, it's not bad to win streak with heart steel. You don't get as many hearts, but uh, you just get free, like you get the econ from win streaking, and then you get extra econ on top of that from heart steel. So it's really not bad to win streak with this trait. As far as what I'm looking for here, I would have liked the tier. I would have liked to have made a spear of shojin for the uh, what is it? The uh, Sarah, what's the name of the unit? The Senna, excuse me. And out of what's left over here, I'm going to take another sword. I'm going to itemize Senna with the expectation that uh, she will turn into Ezreal at some point in time later in the game. And the good news is they actually share a decent amount of itemization. All right, because I'm on win streak, I'm going to level here. I am not looking to just sack my position in order to um, lost streak. So I'll go ahead and put in the... Uh, I was going to... I'll just replace the... Lilio with the Echo, which is a better Sentinel, and also activates true damage for Senna. And then I'll just play the set, because why not? It's that or play a one-star Aphelios or a one-star Yasuo who doesn't activate any traits. Feels like the set is probably the best unit I can play here. Anyway, like I said, the nice thing is Senna and Ezreal share somewhat similar itemization in the sense that they would both like to have a Spear of Shojin. And then um, putting AD items on Senna is not terrible, even though she does deal magic damage. AD items are not terrible on her, just because she gets an extra attack speed from rapid fire trait, and so she'll attack more often. So, by the way, there's that uh, Edge of Night Evan Shroud Olaf over there doing work. All right, so if uh, I'm in kind of a win-win situation here. If I lose the round, I'll get a better heart steal cash out. And if I win the round, my three-match winning streak continues. So I don't really even care what happens here. Uh, I think I prefer to continue win streaking. Ol uh, Symbol keeps coming over and helping me out with that Olaf. But yeah, I mean, uh, four match win streak's pretty good at this point. So I don't mind having that at all. Alrighty. And I'm going to get the little mini cash out. Again, it's not much, but four gold is four gold. It's not bad. Helps accelerate me up towards uh, 50 gold a little bit faster. Definitely doesn't hurt. And then I've got the champion send back. I was asking Symbol, I was like, you know, I do have an... Uh, an ergot in this store here would that be something that might help you out and he was like yeah actually that would activate mosher trait for jack for jacks yeah that actually would be pretty good so we're gonna go ahead and send that over to him for some reason the send like is delayed for two seconds but it did ultimately get over there to his board and that's useful because now the champion send will go back on cooldown and it'll start um charging up again so we'll get it back i think in four more rounds all right, I'm up against someone who is playing Jax. Uh, with, they have a Jax headliner here. Uh, Jax is fairly strong as a as a headliner. Uh, the, it's become a lot more popular since the uh, patch that we're on right now, which is the second patch for TFT uh, set 10 came out. Uh, so it's definitely a strong option. It is a strong in the mid game. It tends to fall off in the late game. So I am going to end up losing that round. But you know what? Heart steel stacks. It gets me 10 heart steel stacks. That's actually not terrible. I would have preferred to win. Don't get me wrong. But it's not that bad. And oh, oh, we hit the Ezreal at 2% odds. Oh my goodness gracious. 
That is what I was looking for. That's going to get me five heart steel in on two seven. And it also gets me a carry unit to play through. Ezreal's just going to be a fantastic unit. Uh, I do want to get a big shot unit in for him. But uh, I mean, that is just a monster high roll for this game. And that's really going to set the path for our board for the rest of this one. So now I've got the Ezreal. I've actually been playing through Ezreal a fair bit. He's uh, pretty strong right now at the moment. Uh, I do have a rod. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this rod, but we'll figure something out. Maybe it could be a Rage Blade, although Rage Blade's actually not a very good item on Ezreal. And then I get more swords. That's actually not bad. And a champion duplicator. It's the I, I have a real champion duplicator that I got from the first round of the game. And then a uh, cheaper, the, the the lesser champion duplicator. So, all right, we'll make a Spear of Shojin on Ez. Then I have two swords. I was like, um... Yeah, let's just, uh, why not just make a Death Blade on Ezreal? I've got this other sword here. So I do have to sell the Senna, but that's okay. I can sell Senna. It's just not that important. We'll just make Spear of Shojin Death Blade Ezreal. Those are very good items on him. Ezreal is an AD caster, so he doesn't benefit that much from attack speed. He benefits more from having something like Spear of Shojin or Blue Buff. Both are pretty good on him. Uh, so he casts more often. And then just raw AD is really good on him. Uh, you want his third cast to be... His third cast is the one where he tosses his ult from normal League of Legends. His first two casts, he just blinks around and shoots a projectile. You want that third cast to just do lots and lots of damage. So stacking heavy AD on him... Here it is. Yeah, stacking heavy, heavy AD on him is really good. And uh, yeah, so the Death Blade's really good. And the Spear of Shojin's a very good item on him as well. So yeah, um, now I've got now I actually have the expectation again that I can maybe win streak with this board. But with five Heart Steel in again, that's not going to be bad. I also have the Crash Test Dummies, which continues to be one of the best augments. And oh, there's a Yone here too. Oh my God, I've got everything I need now. So now I, ha I can actually play six Heart Steel with this. I just need to get a Heartsteel Emblem, which in normal TFT is very hard to do. But ah, this is not normal TFT. This is double up. It is much easier to get emblems here, uh, emblems and spatulas here in the double up mode. So all I need to do is get an, a spatula, which I, I'm hoping I can get from a future gift round. Spatula plus belt makes a Heartsteel Emblem. So if I can get that, I can play the Yone on level 7, put a Heartsteel Emblem on somebody... And we could have seven heart steel in, which just gets completely ridiculous. The game just starts to get out of hand at that point. So that's what I'm hoping can happen. But we haven't gotten to that point yet. Still hoping that I, that can happen. All right. Uh, higher tiers of heart steel give more hearts. I've said this before in previous videos, but people might just be running across this video randomly or unfamiliar with how this works. Uh, heart steel three really doesn't give you that many hearts, but heart steel five gives you significantly more. Heart Steel 1 is just the base hearts. You get 1 for killing an enemy unit, and then I believe you get 10 for losing a round, although I think that that increases as you get to later stages. By the way, look how close this is. But Aphelios actually wins the round, pretty funny. And then I'll sell the Yasuos to get to 30 gold. Uh, heart Steel 5 increases that to 2.5 times the value of hearts. This is actually not as good as far as the uh, losses. Because you go, you know, you go from 10 hearts for a loss to 25 for a loss times 2.5. Definitely a big increase, but not crazy. Oh, and by the way, there, what was it? Oh, there, I think, what was it? I got gifted a um, uh, Aphelios from a Symbol just to make Aphelios two-star. And then I'm going to put in MF because I want to have a big shot trait in play. As is the unit that I'm playing through, so big shot trait's more important than rapid fire trait. Uh, but on Heart Steel 5, you get 2.5 times the hearts. That actually rounds up on kills. So you actually get three hearts per kill as opposed to one. So that's a pretty big benefit. That's triple the starting benefit that you got on Heart Steel 3. So uh, it makes a bigger difference as far as kills than it does as far as losing rounds. As we look peek at uh, Symbol's board here a little bit. He doesn't quite have the Olaf 3, but I believe he has eight Olafs. And wow, I'm, I'm just absolutely annihilated that person while running five Heart Steel. Again, the Edge Reel, just such a difference maker. It's one of the big things with Heart Steel is it really doesn't have a good early game carry. Like I said, you can sometimes use Senna as the early game carry, but that's the biggest issue with the, the Heart Steel is it doesn't really have a good early game carry. But oh, you get that Edge Reel, get that early Edge Reel at 2% odds. Oh boy, it makes a big difference. So I'm win streaking with Heart Steel, which is a great position to be in. Now here's the one downside. I am last pick on the carousel, so uh, whoops, that's that's not so great. That means I will have last pick. I was actually thinking, you know, if, if the belt's left over, I'm going to take the belt and just hope I can get a spatula from Symbol on the next gift round. I'll just take the belt and cross my fingers that maybe I can uh, make a Heart Steel emblem on the next round. So I'm just hoping nobody's going to take that, but uh, it does get taken, so... 
Ah, well, that's okay. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take another sword then, because Ezreal likes sword items. Now, I have been neglecting my front line a little bit, but uh, so far, the Cassante has been holding up reasonably well just with the Sunfire Cape. And I did end up getting, by the way, here's another little uh, mini cash out from Heartsteel. I do get the spatula, so there we go. Uh, you get the spatulas, I'd say something like maybe thir a third of the time there's a spatula available as a gift option in uh, Double Up, so they're pretty common. And I've got the Olaf here, so I'll hold on to that, get that over to Symbol. I believe that makes three-star Olaf for him, although I'm not 100% sure. And uh, anyway, the cash out, the little mini cash out from uh, Heartsteel gave me a uh, some gold, and it also gave me a bow. So I was like, all right, we'll make Giant Slayer for Ezreal, perfect. I would love to have Infinity Edge so that his damage could uh, crit, but I will happily take this. The Giant Slayer is going to scale really well throughout the rest of the game. Gives him a little extra attack speed, a little extra damage. And as people get tankier targets towards the end of the game, and uh, they'll have enough health to start activating the uh, Giant Slayer bonus. But uh, this should be quite good. Anyway, I'm up against one of these Jax boards. I'm expecting to lose this round, by the way, but fortunately Ezreal keys in on the Jax pretty early in the fight. Unfortunately, then Ez tosses his ult at nothing. <laughs> His big ult does not hit the jacks, but still, I was like, all right, come on, Ez, can you maybe blink away one more? There we go. So we actually beat the jacks. So one thing that's good for us in this lobby is there's actually, I think, two different people that are re-rolling for jacks, and um, Sybil has some jaxes as well. So because basically because all these people were able to see the two-cost headliners earlier in the game, multiple people keyed in on the jacks headliners. And um, that just means they're all contesting Jax, and no one is hitting Jax 3-star, which is great. So uh, I think some of these boards maybe should have pivoted out of the Jax, but uh, multiple people were trying to hit it, and that meant no one could <laughs> hit it. And so my board is just cruising because no one's playing Heartsteel in this lobby other than me, and I'm completely uncontested. Alrighty, so yeah, I'm just crossing my fingers that on this next minion round, I'm going to get a belt to drop. I've had one belt drop so far. I did get a belt drop from the initial minion round. That means I have pretty good odds to get another belt to drop. Uh, for those who don't know, the odds of getting components are not completely random. You are less likely to get more copies of the components you've already seen. It's a little built-in uh, odds making that you, like if you've already gotten two tiers, you're unlikely to see a third tier drop up. Uh, and that's the same for all the components. So my hope is that I'll be able to get a belt off this upcoming minion round because I'm a belt away from having Heartsteel um, 7 in which would be really, really good for us. All right, this board's looking a little bit stronger, but Ez's ult takes out pretty much the whole back line there. Now, can Ez blink around to safety? Can he manage to re salvage this round? Well, I'm clearly going to lose here, but ah, Symbol coming in at the last second. Three-star Olaf to the rescue, and that's going to allow my win streak to continue. So once again, I mean, if I lose the round, I get Heartsteel Hearts, and if I win the round, I'm on a five-match win streak. So really, you know, whatever happens, it's going to be pretty good <laughs> either way. One of the great things about having heavy heart steel in so early in the game, I've already gotten two cash outs. They have neither one has been particularly large, but you know, they have helped accelerate my economy. I'm in great shape here. Uh, 50 gold, five match winning streak, halfway to level seven. My board is in relatively decent shape. The two star echo will help. And uh, I'm planning to put in the Senna when I level up. And then hopefully, um, by the way, this is going to be nice to get a few more uh, tank items here. There we go, two-star Senna, that works. Now, the only thing that's not so great are these rods. I don't know what the heck I'm going to do with these rods, but two-star set, that's nice. Now, the only bad thing is I did not get the belt, so womp womp. Was not able to get that belt the way I wanted to to make the heart steel emblem, but I, I'm still going to have another chance on the upcoming carousel, so we'll still have that. And uh, my board actually did get quite a bit stronger in terms of board quality. Uh, Two-star set helps anchor the front line. I got a dragon's claw to put on Cassante that's going to make him notably tankier. And I also hit two-star uh, Senna back there as well. So what I really should have done is I probably should have just taken the two rods and slapped them on Senna in the expectation of turning that turning into a cane later on, that eventually I'd be able to find cane. And cane does need uh, magic, does deal magic damage. But for the time being, I was like, I don't really know what I'm going to do with these rods, so I'll just hold them. And they just sit on my bench for a little while without me doing all that much. But yeah, my whole board is just about two-starred, even though I'm playing the heart steel, which is, you know, does not give any in-combat benefit. So uh, we're just continuing to win here up to a six-match six winning streak, plus bonus uh, heart steel econ on top of that. Well, somebody over there has made a tactician's crown, but uh, they still lost the round anyway. So I'm, I'm just really in a comfortable position here. I can't really 
ask for too much more. And then what's this for my options? There's Jeweled Lotus here. I was like, you know what? It would be very nice if Ezreal could crit on his on his uh, ultimate. That sounds pretty good. Why don't we take that? That way now Ez can crit on his ult as well. I am pretty happy with that. So he does not have Infinity Edge, but he doesn't need it because we have Jeweled Lotus. It's going to let his ult crit anyway. So uh, yeah, we're just continuing to power level here. I'd like to get up to level eight. At level eight, at the very least, I'll have somewhat decent odds to find Kane. So I'm hoping once again, I can either get a belt off this upcoming uh, carousel or that maybe there'll be a Kane on the carousel, although I'm gonna be probably third or fourth pick again, so it's unlikely Kane would get to me. But out of all the five costs, he's generally the one who gets played the least in, in my opinion from what I've seen. If you're not playing Heartsteel, there's very little reason to play Kane. I mean, I guess if you're playing Edgelords, but no one's playing Edgelords in this lobby. So if there's a Kane on that carousel, it might slip through. And that's the other way I can get up to five, uh, up to seven Heartsteel would be if, if I could find a Kane. All right, this person is playing Punk. They have made a Punk emblem. And that means that then they have three-star Jinx with a Gambler's Blade. That's pretty good. I was looking at this and I was like, I'm probably not gonna beat this person because they have the three-star Jinx. I'm able to kill a good portion of their board, but not quite able to get that. And so I lose and uh, don't look now, I actually got like 60 hearts for losing. So the, the heart steel cash out estimated value was 17 gold. So the heart steel cash outs are definitely starting to get a lot better. I mentioned that as you get later in the game, the losses give you more hearts for losing the rounds. All right, so what do we get? Oh, we actually got a Zerat portal, interesting. So we just got a straight up Zerat portal here. Um, you can't make this anymore. Remember how you used to be able to make Zerat portals? Belt plus bow. It was actually one of my favorite items to make. Great when you need an additional frontline in a spellcasting comp and you can't use bows. But that recipe has changed over to Nasher's Tooth. You can no longer make Zerats, but I just straight up get a Zerat as a support item here anyway, which is very nice because as I said, my frontline is not bad, but pro probably could use some upgrading. So I'm gonna put that on the uh, Echo and that's gonna activate his bling bonus since uh, I have a true damage trait in. So that's kind of nice. I really should slap at least one rod on Senna to activate her bling bonus as well. But as I said, I think I didn't spot that move until a little bit later on. I think I was trying to wait and see what I got from these uh, upcoming carousels. Anyway, this board's very tanky. They have a three-star uh, Nico over there, but they don't really have too much damage behind it. Their damage is on the low end, to be sure. They just have a one-star Kai'Sa. I guess Kai'Sa's holding items for Ari, I would presume. But yeah, they don't really have that much damage, so I'm able to win that round. I actually get 30 hearts just from winning the round, which is pretty nice, because as I said, this late in the game, you start getting more hearts um, I guess I killed enough units to get the <laughs> extra hearts. All right, so I am third pick because I lost that round. Uh, and we meanwhile, Symbol's still on full win streak. So that means I go earlier and there is a belt on this carousel. Now it's going to the other side of the carousel, but I'm like, oh, come on. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants this. Come on. Yes. <laughs> that is going to be a heart steel emblem. And that is going to be seven heart steel. We will have to take something out to play to play the uh, with the Yone, but come on, that's this is going to be so much better. So what do I? Oh, I just level. Is it? I level. Oh no, I can just level and play Yone. Just go to eight right here. So we'll level to put Yone in, and then I go ahead and put the Heartsteel Emblem on Senna to activate her Bling bonus. And that's when I finally was like, ah, you know what? We're gonna find Kane later on. Death Cap will be good on Kane. We'll just put this on the Senna as well. So that's seven Heartsteel. Yeah. Uh, seven hearts deal, pretty good. I'm gonna roll it down a little bit here. I'd, by the way, I'd love to get, uh, I'd love to get the um, Sona on my board, but I just don't see how I do that. So out of these options, I was like, uh, you know what? I can play this Jin over the Misfortune. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to activate Jazz Straight, so we'll just play the. I'm definitely gonna be playing Ezreal, so um, I, I might as well play the Jin plus the Ezreal and just not play MF this game, and that'll be the goal there. All right, so this fight's relatively close. Can we kill the Jax though? Can we actually kill the Jax? Well, looks like he's got enough healing that we can't actually kill Jax, but you know what? A one unit loss is just amazing with this heart steal. We got 150 hearts for losing that. Yeah, uh, we were at 60 hearts and we went to 210. We got 150 hearts for losing that. <laughs> So uh, the seven heart steel gives six times hearts, six times, whatever the base value is. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, I've got a Ziggs here, but I was like, I don't see how I, I would like to get Ziggs on the board, but I don't really see how that happens. And then I decide, ah, MF two stars, probably better than Jin one stars. So I'll just play the MF for right now instead, hoping I can find a Lucian and then Senna can become Lucian 
and then uh, Senna's items can go on a Kane down the road. And then if we can put Kane in, we can maybe drop one of these other units. I might be able to drop the Cassante long term. But uh, until I find Kane, I can't drop Cassante because he's giving me seven, giving me two ranks of heart steel. So I cannot drop the Cassante headliner until I find a Kane. All right, so here we go. Another one of these boards. This person's got a Tactician's Crown. Looks like they're also playing EDM with Jax. As I mentioned, Jax was extremely popular in this lobby. Lots and lots and lots of people contesting Jax. Ez is going to get his ult off. Looks like we're not having too much trouble cutting our way through this board. And there we go. So we're going to end up winning this round. And can we get over to help out Symbol in time to win this round? Person has a two-star Karthus. That looks pretty strong. Can we finish off the Karthus before he ults again? Yes. So we're going to end up winning that and make our way into the next minion round. All right, so I mentioned before at the beginning of the game, or uh, at the beginning of the video, I talked about how this is really a no-win scenario for the rest of the lobby. And that's because I have seven heart steel in and a lot of health banked. Very frequently, you'll see someone who has seven heart steel in, but they're down on like 20 health, 15 health, maybe 30 health. It's usually someone has lost a lot of health by the time they get this. We have 77 HP in still remaining. So there's really nothing that the other teams can do here. If they lose to us, then, uh, I mean, then they're almost out of the lobby already. Everybody else is on low health. It's like, all right, well, if you lose to us, then you're just going to be out of the lobby anyway. But if you beat us, then guess what happens? Yeah, I have seven heart steel. You're going to give me so many heart steel, uh, st you give me so many heart steel hearts that I'm going to just get ridiculous cash outs from every single cash out. So yeah. There's not a lot you can do here. One way or the other, you're kind of going to get screwed. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, I need to start itemizing more units. I really would like to get another carry beyond just the edge reel. So I'm trying to figure out if I can do that here, if there's any item combination that I can make work out of these options. So I was like, all right, uh, let's go ahead. I'm still building items for a future Kane. Hand of Justice is good on Kane. Kane wants AP plus healing. So he needs a healing item. Hand of Justice will be good on him. Uh, also, nice synergy with my Jeweled Lotus. Going to make it easier for abilities to crit. So she can hold that for right now. And I'm hoping I can find a better unit. Um, I'm hoping I can find like a Lucian or, or something so I can get a rapid fire trait in and play like Lucian together with the MF. I'd love to play that over like the, uh, um, uh, what's that last unit? Over the um, Senna. So uh, anyway, I lose the round. It's another perfect loss. It's a one unit loss. Takes me up to 594 hearts. Look at this cash out. I'm going to get a ton of gold. I get a Tactician's Crown and a Radiant Thief's Glove. What? <laughs> the uh, cash value of this was like 70 gold. A, a Thief's Glove and a, a Tactician's Crown and a Radiant Thief's Glove. Are you kidding me? Both of these are Prismatic Augments. Like each of these is equal to the value of a Prismatic Augment. That's insane. Okay. Uh, so anyway, we had a gift round here from a uh, symbol. I'm going to take the Thief's Glove. I'm going to put this on my frontliner set. I'm going to put the thief, the Radiant Thief's Glove on the Misfortune. And now I get to play another unit for free. I was like, uh, I don't really have another unit to play. I'll just stick this Blitzcrank on here for right now. Um, I was thinking at this point, all right, I think I just go level 9 at this point. And then at level 9, I can actually find, uh, I'll make this... Um, uh, Titans with the intention it's going to move to somebody else later on. I was like, at level 9, I can actually find a 5-cost headliner. And that's because if you remember back to our portal, at the very beginning of the game, we have the portal where headliners are treated as though you're one level higher than you normally are. In the most recent patches I record this, the odds of hitting a 5-cost headliner uh, were dropped really, really low on level 9. They were previously 10%. They were dropped to 2%. Yeah, from 10% to 2%. So it's basically all but impossible to get a 5-cost headliner on level 9 now. Uh, but if I go to level 9 in this game, I'm going to be treated as though I'm level 10 for the purpose of finding headliners. So that means I can go to level 9, I can find Kane, I can sell Cassante, and then I'll be able to get a 5-cost uh, headliner because I'll be treated, like I said, as though I'm actually level 10 for the purposes of finding headliners. A little bit complicated, but that's the plan. I should be able to get there by the end of the stage. By the beginning of stage six, I should be able to get there. And like I said, if I win the rounds, that's great. We continue putting pressure on the lobby. If I lose the rounds, then, well, I get a billion hearts via Heart Steel 7. So one way or the other, the rest of the lobby is kind of screwed here. Not a lot they can do. Uh, as far as Symbol's board, he's playing six Bruiser. He still has the Olaf in. His board is starting to fall off because that's what happens to Bruisers in the late game. 
<coughs> excuse me, all that health is really good in the early game, but it does fall off in the late game. So his board is starting to, um, wow, look at that. All the all the crash test dummies, both of us had crash test dummies go in and stun the front line. That's pretty funny. So um, he's going to need to try to upgrade his front line. Uh, or not upgrade his front line, just upgrade his board. I believe he's uh, right around the point where he started um, thinking about selling his Olaf and just replacing with uh, another unit. So anyway, this fight's pretty close. Again, that Nico in the front lines is really strong, the three-star Nico, um, but the rest of the board not as strong behind it. And yeah, it looks like we've got this one. Knock that team down to one HP. Um, I've actually been winning these last couple rounds, but uh, you can see I'm close to 300 hearts already because Heart Steel 7 is just absolutely insane. By the late game, the, the rewards just get completely out of control. Uh, there is a cane on this carousel, so I was like, oh, wow, maybe I just take the cane, but it gets snapped up, so, uh, okay. We won't end up picking that one up then. Uh, Symbol is going to go ahead and take the Poppy. He's trying to go for poppies on his board. And out of the items that are left over, I was like, uh, I would have taken that Steadfast Heart, but that gets snapped up. I guess I'm getting a tank item, and I would prefer the Bramble Vest over the, uh, what was the other one there? I can't remember, uh, but the Bramble Vest I think is a bit better. Uh, Rapid Fire Kate's kind of interesting, but no, I don't want a 4-cost headliner. I want a 5-cost headliner. That's my goal there. I still have the, the uh, cheap champion duplicator as well, the one that can only be used on 1, 2, or 3-cost units. So, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this on Blitz because I figured, eh, Probably be able to two-star Blitz down the road. And then Aphelios, you're going to stay on the board, so you can just hold this Tactician's Crown. It gives absolutely no stats, but um, it will now show up in the post-game um, stat screen that I had a Tactician's Crown, so hooray for that. All right, one more round until my next cash out here. I'm up against the Punk board. This person is the win streaking player. They actually have seven Punk in um, <laughs> because they have double uh, Punk emblems. That does not actually do anything. I did a video with Punk 8. having Going beyond Punk 6 does not actually do anything. But uh, they're definitely the strongest in the lobby right now. And Ezreal's ult almost killed Jinx. Did not quite have enough damage to kill Jinx, though, unfortunately. So it looks like we're going to come up just short. But again, this is a pretty good loss. If we had killed the Jinx, I think we would have won this. Uh, it actually takes me out to 552 hearts for heart steal purposes. So now I'm going to get some other absurd cash out here. Uh, I'm going to get some kind of crazy reward on the next cash out. Is it this round or the next round? Uh, looks like I have one more round to go before I get that cash out, but I'm already at 550 hearts. And I'm just planning to go level nine after the uh, minion round. Again, we still have 49 HP, so we're still in pretty good shape. Uh, some of these boards are looking pretty strong. That one board I think was uh, was getting there on the jacks. They still don't have the jacks three star, but uh, that punk board was definitely one of the strongest as well. And then there's like a standard KDA board there, although for whatever reason, they don't have two star Ari yet. I guess Ari was contested in this lobby. So I can get way stronger. As I said, I'm going to be able to get a lot stronger on level 9. And I also just have another big cash out coming my way. This person has double tactician's crowns. So double up mode getting a little bit silly in this game with all the spatulas. Double tactician's crowns. They got four spatulas this game. Pretty wild that they managed to get that. Anyway, though, this is a close fight, but uh, it looks like I, st I believe I still have this one. Or do they manage to kill the MF? I think the MF has this one, though. Actually, probably would be better if I lost this round. Uh, yeah, one you know, one loss actually would have been great there. But I did get another 100 hearts for killing everything on the board. A lot of these people have the crash test dummies. Killing the crash test dummies also counts as that. And oh my god, look at all this gold. I also have a Radiant uh, Last Whisper. And I have another uh, full item anvil right there on my bench to pull. This is absolutely crazy. Okay. So yeah, I have the Radiant, got a Radiant item, and I think that's like a Radiant item anvil as well. Uh, plus all the gold that dropped too. So uh, I think, again, the estimated cash out value was like 70 gold or something absurd like that. So now I'm going to have, again, just insane amounts of gold to roll with here on level 9. I'm actually 50 gold, and I have two, two item anvils sitting there on my bench. I'm also continuing to grab Ezreal's because why not? All right, we're going to move out of the Cassante. So now I'm looking for that 5 cost headliner. And I see Alawi, I'm like, done. That works for me. I'll just play this Alawi because why not? I have very good tank items. She can anchor the front line. So we'll just put Dragon's Claw, Sunfire, and where's my other? I have a, a, um, a Bramble Vest on Blitz that I could potentially give to her as well. So keep rolling for that. I can keep rolling. There's Blitz 2-star. That seems pretty good for anchoring the front line. I was able to put in, and then, by the way, I have a, oh, this is an Orin artifact item. So I was like, okay, I don't really have anyone who can use Mana Zane or Death's Defiant. So let's put the Hull Crusher on Alawi. That feels pretty good. We've got a sun, Sunfire Cape, uh, 
And then I get another um, item. I pull the red buff for Lucian. Uh, what is it? Sunfire Cape, Dragon's Claw, Hulk Crusher, Alawi. Who with and and she's a headliner, so I probably should try to get another bruiser in here for four bruisers. In all honesty, but uh, yeah, that feels pretty good. Now I did drop down to five headliner here, but that's probably the way to go. I probably don't need seven headliner at this point in time. Uh, I could do it if I could put Cassante back in. By the way, I'm also getting close to the Echo three star, so I'm watching that as well. Um, then I managed to get a cane from uh, I managed to get a cane from a uh, symbol. He was able to find one for me. So now I can move some of these items over to Kane and have Kane as another threat as well. I uh, need to make sure no one's actually touching the Alawi for her Hulk Crusher. I believe they are not. So let's go ahead and put the Hand of Justice. So we can put the Titans on him as well. It's not an amazing Kane item, but it's not terrible on him. Uh, I also still have the Heartsteel Emblem, so that would get me back to Heartsteel 6. I might as well put that on somebody. There's no reason not to have somebody getting the benefits. I think I put that on Echo just because it does give him a little bit more health. So that gets me to six heart steel. So I could take out a unit and play the um, Cassante for seven heart steel. But I, I kind of want to keep all the units on the board that are in here, to be perfectly honest. Like, I don't really want to take out MF or Lucian. They're doing a lot of work for me. I don't really want to take out the Blitz. He's giving Sentinel trait and he has very good item. Like, he has a very good item there in the Bramble Vest. So I was like, ah, I think I'm okay here. By the way, I'm still seeing more Ezreals. That's seven Ezreals here so far. So, okay, keep going for that. Uh, I probably should, t and I have a Sona, which I believe I could send over to Symbol. He has one Sona. He's really looking for Poppy though. And I, I did go buy a Poppy there earlier, which is kind of bad. I wish I had spotted that because I know he was looking for that. We could also double send for Sona too, but he said, no, he didn't need that. He said, keep, and by the way, there's an, uh, there's a Kane headliner, but no, I'm content with the Alawi. I know Alawi doesn't really fit this board, but I'm still pretty content with her. Uh, now I have, well, I have seven Ezreals. I have the Lucian who gives me Jazz trait and Rapid Fire trait. He has the Radiant um, uh, Last Whisper, so he armor shreds on his ult, and he attacks very fast because he has the red buff. So yeah, my board, pretty strong. I'm actually kind of shocked how close this round was. That person was definitely the strongest in the board. They, they were actually getting close to Zed 3-star, but I think we were able to knock them out of the lobby, I believe. Like I said, they are definitely getting pretty strong there. And uh, yeah, we actually do lose that round on the reinforcement. So that person's Sleepy Summoner is pretty strong. All right, on this carousel, we are down to just one other team with one hit point left. Uh, there's an Ezreal on this carousel. I was like, oh, that gets me to eight Ezreals. I think I have to take that. Nobody wants an Ezreal on this carousel, right? Right? Nobody wants that. All right, there we go. So one more Ez, pretty please. One more Ez for Ez three star. That would certainly be nice. Uh, now I wish I hadn't used that champion duplicator earlier. I used it to hit Ez two star, um, but now I'm one off of Ez three star. We'll put this on Blitz. Seems like the most useful person. So I'm looking for one more Lucian. Uh, two more Echoes would be nice here, or Canes. I'm looking for Canes as well. And can we find this? Ah, no, not able to find it. Well, there's the poppy. I'll go ahead and send this. I wanted a little bit more gold to roll with, and oh, it's there, it's there. Ezreal three star, there we go. That's how to cap out a hard steel board with Ezreal three star. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I don't think this other team has much of a chance. Ezreal's ult does like 3000 damage to everything that it hits. Watch when he casts this ult. Just see what actually gets tagged by it. I mean, my board was already outscaling already. Oh, he shot it at absolutely nothing. Good job, Ezreal. Just shot it at the corner of the board. Well, we win this round anyway, and that's, yeah, that's that. That's a wrap for this one. Um, <laughs> Ez three star to the rescue at the end of the game. Uh, as I said, a fitting capping point for a seven heart steel board. So I really did think that that game was a good example of what happens when heart steel just gets completely out of control. I was very lucky to hit the early five heart steel, but we we were win streaking for so long with heart steel. It really just puts you in an amazing position because, like I said, that there's nothing the rest of the lobby can do. If they beat you, they give you a million hearts and you get these insane cash outs. And if uh, if you keep winning, then you know you just win the lobby. So it like it's a heads I win, tails you lose situation. But it's a lot of fun when it all comes together. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope everything's going well with all of you. Until next time, have a great week, folks. I'll see you again soon.